Representative Perry Warren, my understanding is Pennsylvania is the only state that permits shooting pigeons for target practice. Take us inside a pigeon shoot contest by describing what happens there. Well, pigeons are gathered up by the, the proponents of a pigeon shooting contest and then trapped, uh, gathered, held, and then released to be, for the purpose of being shot at, like, like a person might do a clay pigeon. Except in this case, we're not talking about clay pigeons. We're talking about real live, breathing, flying pigeons. And how's the pigeon shoot competitive? How do they go about scoring such a contest? Well, my understanding, it's based on kills or targets. Uh, the, the pigeons aren't actually always killed. So, um, in fact, sometimes the, the pigeon shoots are over water, so the bodies aren't retrieved and uh, not necessarily known whether a, a pigeon is, is killed or not. Uh, but there's a scoring system based on strikes by, uh, of the, of the uh, pigeons by the, by the shooters. Now, the bird is released from a box, and so how close range uh, is the shooter when the bird is released from the box? When the bird is released from the box, the, the is my understanding, I haven't been to a pigeon shoot. Okay. Um, my, my understanding is the bird is very close in proximity to the shooters because it is being released from the ground to, uh, to fly above to serve as a target for, the, uh, for the, the shooters. And what kind of weapon are the participants using at, at these pigeon shoots? Well, they're using guns, firearms. Well, for example, is it a shotgun, a rifle? Yeah, shotgun, rifle. I don't think they're using handguns. Now, can you tell us about the uh, participants uh, that attend these shows? Uh, who are they, demographics-wise? Are they these uh, young men, uh, older men, for example? Tell us. So I haven't studied the demographics of the of the pigeon shoots. There used to be a number of pigeon shoots uh, hosted by gun clubs throughout Pennsylvania and, and in other parts of the, of the country. Although, as you alluded to, as far as we know, uh, Pennsylvania is the only state that presently does not prohibit uh, pigeon shoots. So, and then again, as far as we know, there's one regularly scheduled pigeon shoot still here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And although it's operated by an entity known as the Philadelphia Gun Club, the shoot itself happens right here in Bucks County, uh, where, where I'm located and where I represent five towns. And where do all the pigeons come from anyway for such a contest? Somebody has to supply them. Well, so, I, I don't know if they're supplied, um, but several years ago, the, uh, the New York Bar Association sent a letter to then Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman with copy, copies to then Governor Wolf and the leaders of the uh, respective House and Senate caucuses uh, describing the practice of people coming to New York City and gathering, trapping pigeons by, by scattering food and then catching, mm. capturing them in a net for the mm. purpose of transporting them back to Pennsylvania for pigeon shoot contests. And the gist of the New York Bar Association letter was, please stop this. Mm -hmm. and, and it even says, what, you know, it may, it, may seem, it may seem odd that the New York Bar Association is sending this letter to Pennsylvania, but the pigeons are, are, are actually being captured in, in New York uh, for the purpose of, of being brought to Pennsylvania for a pigeon shoot, and that's unlawful under New York law. And about how many birds are killed at a typical pigeon shoot? Has anyone attempted to put a number on it? Well, according to a reported case uh, by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court from 1999, there are four to 6,000 pigeons become the target of gunfire mm. in a pigeon shoot. 500 or so die immediately from their wounds. Uh, several hundred, hundreds of others fall within, within a encircled target area and are then, and then are, are then killed um, mm -hmm. by various methods, which the court describes in, in somewhat uh, um, uh, drastic detail. And, um, and others, though, outside of the targeted area, outside of the encircled area, just die eventually from their wounds, from starvation, from, from thirst. Mm -hmm. Now, again, my, my understanding is that the last remaining pigeon shoot takes place uh, at a club uh, in your district. And you already mentioned it, the Philadelphia Gun Club. And uh, uh, try to give us a visual there. How big of an event is that? How often does it happen? Uh, are there protesters there? So it's not actually in my district. Um, I represent the communities of Lower Makefield Township, Newtown Borough, Newtown Township, Upper Makefield Township, and Yardley. The pigeon shoot uh, that, that, I, that I've been made aware of by the Humane Society 
is actually located in Ben Salem, um, which is a, a town a, a, a several miles away, which borders Philadelphia. Uh, the, the gun club itself is is called the Philadelphia Gun Club. Um, I I did not. I've lived in Bucks County this time as an adult for 25 years. I was never aware of the existence of this pigeon shoot in Ben Salem as a Bucks County resident. It, so it's not something that you see in the uh, Bucks County Courier Times or hear about on WBCB radio um, or our local local online media. Uh, I, it was brought to my attention by the Humane Society of the United States. And uh, again, several years ago, there were a number of pigeon shoots in Pennsylvania. And my understanding, and I believe their understanding, is this is the only one that remains on a regular basis. And I believe it's roughly annually, but I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not certain of that. Again, it's not widely publicized. Well, I understand uh, some of these pigeon shoots do go back several years. And the one, the Philadelphia Gun Club, uh, Annie Oakley participated in that. That was a long time ago. And really? So, <laughs> that, that, certain, that kind of publicity certainly must have had an impact on the public's imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have the shoots uh, in recent years, have they gotten, have they uh, shrunk in popularity or have they gotten more popular? So again, my understanding is they've become less popular, mm -hmm. fewer people participating. Uh, there's uh, gr with greater awareness and greater, I think, consideration of the rights of animals and, and, and considering other uh, laws and regulations that proscribe animal cruelty, like banning cockfighting and dogfighting. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the case that involved uh, Michael Vick several years ago, I, 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 I believe have raised some consciousness, uh, not only among people who, who say, oh, this is, this is horrible, um, th this, should be, this should be stopped, but also among people who maybe looked at the practice in a different light and thought, well, uh, maybe this is something that's, that's, that, that we as, as hunters or sporting enthusiasts uh, really shouldn't be doing anymore. Are you aware of confrontations between uh, protesters and, and pigeon shoots uh, at the Philadelphia Gun Club? I'm not. I have. I have not become aware of any confrontations. Now, uh, the pigeon shoot that a lot of Pennsylvanians uh, can recall was in Higgins, Pennsylvania, and that was in Schuylkill County. And that used to get national headlines, and there were protests, arrests, and uh, what what finally shut that down. So I believe that it is that Higgins Park. Um, I'm talking about Higgins. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was the pigeon shoot that was the subject of that case that I that I referenced from mm -hmm. the, by the Supreme Court in 1999, in which the court really really dis described in detail um, words like throwing or smashing them against objects on the ground, crushing the birds by falling them and suffocating them mm. by the birds. These are birds that have already been shot, but 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 haven't died yet. The the Supreme Court really used graphic terms to uh, to de describe the practice. And again, it's my understanding that the, that the pigeon shoots at, at that location have uh, ceased some, some years ago. So, Representative, let's understand more about your proposed legislation. What does your bill do about live pigeon shoots in Pennsylvania? So there are currently animal cruelty statutes in Pennsylvania that, that prohibit uh, acts of animal cruelty. Cruelty I already mentioned mm -hmm. or alluded to dogfighting and cockfighting. Um, and they simply aren't mentioned. Pigeon shoots aren't mentioned in our animal cruelty statute. Now, a prosecutor could take the position that the language is broad enough that it would encompass pigeon shoots, mm -hmm. uh, but they haven't. And so the objective of this legislation is to make it clear and to specifically and explicitly ban pigeon shoot contests in Pennsylvania. Now, this doesn't, this doesn't prescribe going out with your dog and 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 hunting birds in 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 the woods or in, even pigeons, um, it pro, it prohibits these these scheduled contests uh, in which mm -hmm. pigeons are 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 simply slaughtered. Now, tell us more, Representative Warren, uh, about the reason you're involved in this. Why is this particular cause important to you? Why is it Im important to abolish these live pigeon shoots? So I think, like many people who are who are watching this broadcast. I didn't know about pigeon shoots or didn't know that they that they exist today. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like something from an, another era, like fox shoots and 
and uh, and and gladiator games, and mm-hmm. um, it, it seems like a, a vestige of the past. I was approached by representatives of the Humane Society, who uh, who came and talked to me about about the issue, and said we're looking for someone to sponsor a bill. And I said I'd, I'd love to sponsor that bill. Mm. Uh, it, it reminds me very much of an issue that um, when I was first elected in, in, in 2016 and, and sworn in in 2017, in my second month in office on a Saturday morning, I got two emails from constituents uh, saying, you've got to see this article in the Washington Post about child marriage and do something about it. I read the article. I didn't know about child marriage. I didn't know that 12-year-olds were being married to adult men. But I but I said, and, and nearly everyone that I ever spoke to it about said, this this ain't right. <laughs> we we've mm-hmm. we've got to do something about this. And ultimately, we uh, both both chambers of the legislature passed. Um, I, I introduced the the bill originally, and then uh, there was a significant Republican majority in the House of Representatives at the time. A Republican member, Representative Jesse Topper, and I worked together on the bill, and he reintroduced the bill in his name. And it ultimately passed unanimously in the House and Senate, and was signed into law by Governor Wolf in 2020. Mm-hmm. So very much. This is the child like marriage that. bill you're still talking the, about. The child marriage bill, yes, um, very much like that. Pigeon shoots, when I found out about pigeon shoots happening, not necessarily in my backyard, but not so far away, mm-hmm. I had a similar reaction. This is something that in 2023, I guess it was last year that we mm-hmm. first that I first introduced it, uh, this, this is something that should be stopped. And when we talk to people about it, when people become aware of it, like like uh, people viewers today, almost almost uniformly people say, oh, I can't believe that's happening. Yes, we, it's, hmm. it's, we should prohibit that. Well, and under, so I, I had that reaction and said, I'd be happy to sponsor this bill. Under your bill, then, uh, what's the penalty for having a pigeon shoot? Is that included in your bill? It is. It's a summary offense. So it would be, uh, it would be, uh, the penalty be, would be a, along the lines of the summary offense in criminal statutes, a relatively minor offense. Nobody's, nobody's going to nobody's going to prison. Um, mm-hmm. It would mo- it would most likely be a fine. Mm-hmm. It, the, ultimately, the sentence is is is, is um, prescribed by by the judge, uh, but it, it most likely would be a fine. Oh, the judge would determine uh, what the fine would be if that were the penalty. Yeah, it's a summary offense. So the the Pennsylvania statutes provide what the range of penalties would be for various levels of criminal offenses or or quasi criminal offenses. Now, in the event of a live pigeon shoot going on illegally, then who would be penalized? Is it the organizer, the participants, both? So the language of the statute says if the person willfully organizes, operates, conducts or knowingly permits a premises. Uh, to be owned, leased, or used for a contest event. Hmm. Now, uh, earlier, Representative, you said that uh, it strikes you that pigeon shoots seem to be a vestige from uh, years gone by. And I mentioned, of course, that uh, Annie Oakley uh, participated in a pigeon shoot, and, and that was decades and decades ago. So it's been several years since lawmakers voted on pigeon shoots. So it seems like this had fallen out of the spotlight at least for a decade, and now it's back. I wonder why that ebb and flow. So the the, the history of the legislation is actually quite interesting. Um, I, I serve on the House Judiciary Committee, and the House Judiciary Committee passed this bill, not unanimously, but with uh, with bipartisan support um, a couple, month, two months ago. Mm-hmm. And the, the representatives of the Humane Society brought to the hearing um, a copy of the original bill, which was introduced in 1987. Mm-hmm. And we have we have one member still in the House of Representatives, Representative Robert Freeman from Easton, who w- was in the House in 1987. And I looked at the bill and he was a co-sponsor some 37 years ago. He had signed on to that bill. And I, I, I mentioned that to him mm-hmm. when we went up to the floor of the House. And he said he remembered. He re- huh. remembered when that bill was first introduced. And then uh, Senator Roy... Afflenbach? Afflerbach. Afflenbach. We know yes. him. Okay. Yep. Good man. He was a he was a proponent of the legislation uh, in the in the early two thousands, and he's actually come to talk to me about it in his uh, in his um, hmm. civilian capacity. And um, the bill was my understanding is the bill was voted upon in the Senate in or around two thousand fourteen, 
and passed at that time in the Senate with bipartisan support, although not unanimously, uh, and never received a, how, a vote in the House of Representatives during that term hmm. and hasn't been voted upon again. I think that the Humane Society recognized that this was a good time to uh, rejuvenate this language or, or this bill, this cause, uh, bring attention to it. I think public sentiment uh, is is in support of ending pigeon shoots, and they they saw this as an opportunity, and I and I agreed with their assessment. Now, Representative, this may call for some speculation on your part, but how did pigeon shoots get left out of PA animal cruelty law anyway? Any so, theories? So yeah, so it, it, you know, it was a long time ago. It could have been an oversight. It's the kind of thing that could have happened in negotiations mm -hmm. to get enough votes. As 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 the governor has said, the numbers are 102, 26, and one uh, to to pass legislation and get it signed into law in Pennsylvania. It may have been part of negotiations in order to uh, to get an animal cruelty bill passed to accept or or leave out pigeon shoots from the bill. Uh, I, I don't know the legislative history. It's an interesting question, though, and perhaps for you to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, on both our ends, it's something we can look into. Yeah. Oh, well, let's consider the uh, journey of the legislation uh, you've had. And as far as the committee is concerned, uh, has this gone through the committee yet? And uh, if so, what's next? Yes, it passed in the, it passed in the House Judiciary Committee. Mm -hmm. And it passed... I believe it was, so there are 25 members, I would say it probably passed 16 to nine, give or take a, give or take a vote. Mm -hmm. And with that, it's now, it's now teed up having passed in committee and been sent and been sent to the full house. It's now teed up to go on to the legislative voting calendar in the house. Uh, it's up to ultimately the, um, the, the lead, the house leadership uh, as you know, not every bill gets voted upon. Right. Even after it's passed in committee, it's now uh, up to House leadership to put it up for a vote and see where they see where the chips fall. Can you tell if uh, House leadership is showing any priority to getting this bill done soon? So, I, in all candor, I can't say that priority is the word because the bill did pass in committee some time ago. Mm -hmm. and it's not, and it's not gone onto the calendar yet. Um, but it's certainly a subject of discussion, and I know our friends at the Humane Society are working very hard to uh, convince both um, uh, leadership uh, to, to put the bill up for a vote or run the bill is mm -hmm. the lexicon that we use, um, and, uh, and, and to encourage all members to vote for it. So whenever the bill is considered by the full House, just what kind of debate are you anticipating? Are, are there certain points that you're ready to argue so uh, I often find that on the, when, when it's the floor of the House or, or in committee and you think the bill's going to pass, the, sometimes the less, or oftentimes, uh, the less said the better. Um, so I don't know that I'll be making arguments on the floor. I, I'll, I'll have mm -hmm. to feel the room um, to, uh, to, to, to make that decision. I, you know, in terms of arguments against, I'm not really you know, make a practice of making other people's arguments for them. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's a whole lot that could be said in support. I think if mm -hmm. I if I were someone who were going to vote against this bill, I'd probably just push the no button and not talk about it. <laughs> right. Understood. Well, let's consider uh, the views of uh, one of your colleagues, and that would be uh, Rob Kaufman. And uh, he anticipates that putting this bill through, which would outlaw live pigeon shoots, it would be a slippery slope, he called it, towards gun restrictions. Uh, how do you view that opposition? So, so Larry, I, I support gun safety legislation. In fact, um, another bill of which I am the sponsor um, would require universal background checks and close the so-called gun show loophole. Mm -hmm. That bill passed last year. I think it was in May of, it was about, it was just over a year ago. We celebrated the, 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 the it was, it was a, it was a metered celebration. One, that we had finally passed a universal background check bill in mm -hmm. the, uh, in, in, in the House a year ago, um, but countered by the fact that it hasn't gotten a vote in the Senate or in committee and Senate and has, uh, has not moved uh, through that part of the process. Um, so I, I support gun safety legislation. I wanted to make very clear, though, in this legislation, this is not a gun bill. This is not a gun mm -hmm. safety bill. This is not a, a gun control bill. This is not a restriction of gun rights. This, isn't a, this, this bill doesn't... Um, um, it, 
in, involve the Second Amendment mm -hmm. at all. And in fact, I, I, when you when drafting legislation, there's various words that get that get kicked around and drafts of legislation in other states that we have a look at. And I took out of the draft any any reference to firearms because this is not a firearm bill. This is mm -hmm. a prevention of animal cruelty bill. So I would counter that by saying it's not it's not a slippery slope. It's it's a separate issue. And if it's a slippery slope at all, it is to further uh, further enacting humane policy with respect to live animals, not addressing guns at all. Let's consider the perspective of uh, Governor Shapiro. Has he indicated any way anything that he would do about live pigeon shoots in Pennsylvania? So I have I have not gotten a definitive um, I, I, no, I, no, I, no aspersion here. I haven't asked. Um, so I do not know what the governor's specific position would be. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, change the subject to something completely different here, Representative, and consider okay. legislation you're working on that has to do with single-use plastic bottles. Now, I understand the bill passed uh, the House about them. So uh, tell us in simple terms, what is that bill about? So that's another bill that passed in this, in, in this case, in the state government committee. Um, and, uh, and in the in the house um that was a bill that i if, if you'll indulge me a, a, li a little bit of background Please. i get thirsty and when i fly most of my life i bring a lot of extra drinks uh on on, on a plane with me post 9 11 you can't bring i, I can't bring a, a 12 pack of diet coke and a bottle of water from home through uh, through tsa so so you, you've got to get you got to get through tsa and then and then try to find something to drink and the prices right. are high and, right and a few years ago uh, we were flying out to uh to uh, jackson wyoming to visit national parks and i saw for the first time a water bottle filling station at philadelphia hmm. airport and said this is awesome i had an empty bottle with me and filled it up with with clean water and and not having to do like i had like i used to where you have to Hold your, I actually have a bottle here where you have to hold your bottle like this yes. under a water fountain to try to capture the water. Yes, and you get you half put of it, right, it. And the water goes in and, uh, and walk onto the plane with some fresh, clean water. Um, and then when we arrived in Jackson at the Grand Teton uh, National Park Visitor Center, there was a display of water bottle waste. It was a, it was it was the entire room was covered. The ceiling was covered with with water bottles that had been discarded and found in, in, in the park. And I, I, I took those two those two events together. Along with, I, I, my legislative office does occasionally does some park cleanups, and the state parks are kept spotlessly clean. It's hard to find trash or hmm. litter in the state parks, but when you're out there doing a litter cleanup, you got to find something. And most of what we found was water bottles. So to put all the all three of those together, I said, well, let's 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 address water bottle waste. And I didn't want to do a, I didn't want to do a ban because it ha having Portable water is a good thing. So I said, let's 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 try a carrot approach here rather than a stick. And so rather than uh, rather than proposing a bill that would ban water bottles, I proposed a bill that would require the installation of water bottle filling stations. And I said, let's start with government buildings. Mm -hmm. And right. that later became a bit more more narrowed to government buildings, state buildings under the uh, under the administration of the Department of General Services. And that's the language that ultimately passed. But it's 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 designed to reduce water bottle waste, to reduce um, re reduce the, uh, the the litter as well as the stack up of, of recycling. Mm -hmm. But then uh, uh, something else that I realized and appreciated more uh, during COVID was the, uh, the 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 hygiene aspect of it. It's much more hygienic mm -hmm. to just yeah. Fill your own bottle and drink out of it, rather than Some, just sip sip at the uh, the water fountains. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, well, let's uh, consider what is possibly a fine point to be considered at a later date. But what will determine how many uh, refilling stations are installed in a government building? Have you gotten uh, that deep yet? Yeah. So the language says basically wherever a water fountain would be installed 
a water bottle filling station be installed either as well or 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 instead so it would be consistent with the with the building requirements of of a uh, of, of the specific building um you know the language that is passed applies only to new or new new government buildings or buildings in which the um the the plumbing is being mm -hmm. is being improved or such that such that the uh, it, it impacts the uh, the water fountains how much support representative warren are you getting from your colleagues now that you've uh, had this almost an epiphany the way you told us uh, how you discovered uh, how a water bottle refilling station could be valuable are they on board yet yeah i think so it's another thing where where when discussed folks say oh that's a good idea there certainly is a there certainly is considerable support as well for the concept of just completely banning the bottles mm -hmm. I, I take more of a more of a middle of the road approach here by saying let's not ban the bottles at least now, um, but let's let's offer an alternative. It's also a cost saving alternative as well. For the it's it's cheaper to fill your own bottle than than it is to uh, to pay you know whatever a bottle of water costs a, a dollar in one place and you know five dollars at the airport. Uh, Representative, let's try to cover one more subject before our show ends. We have about two minutes left. What stands out to you about Governor Shapiro's uh, new budget proposal? So Go Governor, Governor Shapiro really looked at what Pennsylvania needs, the needs of Pennsylvania as, as a whole, and said it's time to make an investment in the people of Pennsylvania. I, I recognize and appreciate Governor Shapiro's budget is really saying we're, we're going to we're going to invest here. We're going to invest in our people. We're going to invest in education. We're going to invest in our future. And I am excited to support uh, Governor Shapiro's budget proposal. And uh, school vouchers are, are being reignited in the legislature as a debate has been revived there. And uh, tell us briefly, what is your position on school vouchers, which is funding for religious and uh, private schools? Yeah, so the, the, the communities that I represent, we have two wonderful public school districts, Council Rock School District and Pennsbury School District. A lot of the people who live here live here because of the quality of the public schools. In fact, when my, I, I, I was actually born here, we moved away when I was five years old. Um, but when it was time for me and my wife to decide where we were going to raise our, pay, our children and send our kids to school, we chose the Council Rock School District. Mm -hmm. We could have easily chosen the Pennsbury School District. It was where we found a house that we could afford at the time. And and I, public education is essential. It's probably the most important program that uh, that that the state legislature is is in charge of or is responsible for. And it's essential that the top priority in education funding be public education. All right, Representative Perry Warren, thank you very much for spending time with us. Thank you, Larry. Enjoyed it.